So my allergies are really, really bad today. I apologize if I sound very stuffed up, and it looks like I've been crying for a long time. Nature has been attacking my sinuses. But either way, in today's video, I will be talking about Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is a video editing program that you can get on Mac, and it can be a very intimidating program to just get right into without any instruction. So today I will basically be walking you through a beginner's guide of Final Cut Pro. So without any further ado, let's get into it start out by saying that I am no expert at this. There's a bunch of different ways to do the same thing in this program. This is how I do things. If you know a faster or better way to do something, comment it down below so we can all benefit from your knowledge. But yes, let's get started. So once you open up Final Cut, this is what you will see. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is start a new event. You'll go up here to File, then New, and go over to Event. You can name your event. I usually just leave it as the date and you click OK. Once you've clicked OK, it will save over here in the sidebar. Now the next step is you will want to start a new project. And to do that, you will go up to File, New, and Project. This menu will pop up and you are able to name your project. Let's name ours Final Cut. And within this menu, you're able to choose the video format that you want to save in, the resolution, and the frame rate of your timeline. Now I always edit in a 24 frames per second timeline. Is it is the most natural to the eye. And even if you've shot your footage in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you are still able to import and edit your footage in this 24 frames per second timeline. All you have to do is slow your footage down a little bit and after all that is the entire point of shooting at higher frame rates is to slow it down so once you've chose all your settings click ok and right here you have your new project now say you have multiple projects that you're working on and you want to bounce back and forth between all of them all you have to do is go over to this side where you have all of your events click on the event that you saved your project in that you want to work on scroll up to the top and at the very top will be your other projects now that you have your new event and project you need to import some type of clip to edit so what you want to do is click on this arrow up here and that will bring up the import menu. Now you can import audio, you can import video, pictures, anything that you want to put on your timeline, you will import from this window. So find where your clips are saved and you're able to import them. So now you can import single clips or you can import an entire folder. And once you have your clips selected, go down here and click import selected. Now both of the clips that we've imported are over here in our event. I'm just going to use these two simple clips that I took on a trip that I was on this weekend on my phone. Nothing special, but just to show you how to cut everything up. Now, before I start telling you how to cut up these clips, I'm going to go over a couple shortcuts that you're going to need, and you're going to use them all the time. All these shortcuts are right here in this menu, so if you forget any of the shortcuts, all you have to do is click on that, and all of them are right here. So the first tool that you're going to use all the time is the Select tool. The shortcut for Select is A. The next one that you're going to use is the Blade tool. That is going to be to cut up your clip and the shortcut for that is B. You'll also use the zoom feature and the shortcut for that is Z and the space bar is play and pause. Now in this preview window you are able to preview your clips by just hovering your cursor over top of the clip but you want to make sure that your blade tool is selected so press B and then you can scrub through the footage and it'll show up in your window. Now if you want to drag this entire clip to the timeline all you have to do is click on the clip click and hold and drag. Now once the clip is on the timeline press Z for zoom zoom and you're able to zoom in on the timeline on your actual clip so then that way you can see what you're doing better if you're zoomed out too far you're not going to be able to accurately edit your clip now I like to drag in one clip at a time to edit I used to just put all of my clips on the timeline at once but now that I've been doing this for a while I do like to keep my timeline as clean and neat as possible so now before you start to cut up your clip if you need to change the exposure at all you can do it now by clicking on the clip but first you have to make sure that the selection tool is selected so you press a click on your clip and you go up to this icon right here now you can go through and mess with the exposure this slider on the far left side is the master control that'll change your clips entire exposure if you want to get into more detail you're able to do the shadows the midtones, or the highlights also in this menu you're able to go to the saturation and color messing with those is a whole nother video on its own and this is going to be a beginner video so let's just keep it simple I actually do like the exposure of my clip so I'm just going to leave that alone all right so now let's start to cut up this clip when I'm editing any type of vlog video where I'm talking a lot and the camera's just on me I honestly don't even ever watch the actual video I'm always paying attention down here to the sound waves so in that way I could tell where I started and stopped talking and it's easier for me to cut out the dead sound spaces but for a clip like this there's no talking and it's just video I obviously have to watch the clip so let's watch this video and see where we want to make our cuts
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to cut out that middle part where I'm running up the steps. So I'll press B on my keyboard so the blade tool will pop up and you're able to scrub through your footage down here on your timeline. I wanna keep this first part and watch as I start turning, I'm gonna cut away. So I'll go back before I start to turn, I click on my clip to cut and then I'll scrub forward when I'm up on the deck and make another cut. Now I will press A to have the selection tool. I'll click on that middle clip so it's highlighted and press the delete key to get rid of it. Now let's start back at the beginning. So now that whole boring part of me running up the steps is gone. If there is a little part at the end of your clip that you want to get rid of, like in this clip, I started to turn away to the houses and I don't want to show that with the selection tool. All you have to do is go right to the end of the clip and you see how I have that little tool pop up with the two arrows. Once that tool is popped up, you can just click and drag and it'll show you how far you're cutting out of your clip. So going right there to where I only pan to the trees and don't show the other houses, that's where I want to end my clip. So now, I think that looks a little bit better. All right, let's bring in the second clip and we'll just drag and drop it and we'll let it play through. We were camping and this deer walked directly up to us. There was like a whole yeah, herd deer. of deer that kept doing this all weekend. Is he going on the dock? <laughs> all right, so the deer started to turn away and walk that way and I want to end it a little bit back here. So right here, his head's starting to go behind the bush, so I'm gonna cut here, press A for the selection tool, select the part of the clip that I want gone, and press delete. So now our video transitions from here and cuts right away to this. Now I don't like how it starts as a wide and I clicked on my phone to zoom in. So I'll press B for the blade tool, scrub through until I see myself zoom in, make a cut, press A for the selection tool and delete that part. So now it just goes over to the zoomed angle. All right, so now that we've cut up our clips, maybe you want to put some transitions in your video. To add a transition, you go over here and click this icon and the transitions menu will pop up. Final Cut comes with a bunch of preloaded transitions. You can also download others if you want. To apply them between two clips, all you have to do is select it, click, drag, and drop. Now let's see what that looks like. That's a pretty long transition. So if you want a shorter transition where it's a little bit more subtle, just like how we drug the end of this clip in, all you do is go towards the end of the transition to where this icon pops up and you drag it down to where it's shorter. So now it's a quicker transition. Now each transition, if you click on it up here in this window, will have different controls that you're able to customize and change. So this one is a directional transition. And if I wanted to change the direction of like the swipe, you can go right here and just change it. And you can see it changed from going, let's see, it was going sideways and then we changed it to up and down. And each transition will have a different menu. You'll just have to mess around with that when you choose your transitions. So now that your video is looking a little bit cooler since you added some sweet transitions, let's add some music. If you're making a YouTube video that you want to monetize, you can't use a song from the radio. It will get a copyright claim and you won't be able to make any money. Now what you need to do is you need to get copyright free music. I use Epidemic Sound. No, I am not sponsored by them. This is just what I use. If you know a website that's better than Epidemic, feel free to comment it. I'm always looking for new services to try out. So so let me know. Epidemic Sound is $10 a month. And if you are trying to make YouTube videos and make money on them, you definitely need a service like Epidemic. Now, once you've downloaded your songs, it will pop up in this downloads tab down here. And what I do is I just click, drag and drop. You could also import songs the way that we imported your clips up here with this arrow. But if it's just right here in this download folder, that is just much easier to drag and drop. Now you can cut up any song just like you cut up a clip with your blade tool. And if you're putting it over a clip where somebody's talking or you don't want the sound to be present, all you have to do is select the clip that you wanna turn off the volume on, make sure that your playhead is over it and select the clip. Go up here to this sound menu and right here, the volume slider, you could just drag all the way down. And now that clip is muted. All right, now all the sound from these clips are muted. We can cut up our song and put the part that we want over top of our clips. Now I'll just press play. All right, so I wanna get rid of that intro part. All you do with the selection tool, press B for the blade tool, and you're able to scrub through the song just like a clip, and you're, and you're able to hear it go, you know, really fast.
So right here, I'm able to see that the audio spikes up and that's where the intro ends and the song begins. So that's where I will make my cut. Press A, click the clip and delete it. Now you just drag and drop the song to where you want it to start and let's try it out. All right, so that clip now looks cooler because we added transition and music. Now, if you want background music and you don't want your music to be so loud, select your audio clip, go up here into this menu, and you're able to turn down your volume. Depending on the song, you'll have to turn it down different amounts, but for this, we're just gonna keep it full volume. Now, at the end of our clip, we're gonna delete the rest of this song and say I want this song to fade out at the end. Hover your cursor over this little tiny icon at the end of the audio clip, click and drag up. Now, depending on how long you want your fade out to be, you can drag this farther into the clip or farther out. We'll just drag it to right here and see how that sounds. So it goes from full volume down to nothing. So that's a nice smooth fade out. You could also do that at the beginning of the clip if you want it to fade in. So in that way, everything's not so abrupt. So now your video is getting close to being finished. Say you want to put an image in your video with a logo or a transparent background for your YouTube channel. Here's an example of what that would look like. Real quick, I just want to mention, I am starting a clothing brand named Boundless. I know a lot of people have heard about me talk about this in the last month and our launch has been delayed due to all of this COVID stuff. So hopefully we will be on track very soon. But either way, you should go follow us on Instagram. We're planning to do a lot of really cool things for the creative community. And I'm really excited to be a part of it. So yeah, go check us out. Back to the video. So all you have to do to achieve that effect is import a PNG file. And with that PNG file, you have to save it with a transparent background. So I wanna put my logo over top of this clip right here. I already have my PNG file here in this folder. All you have to do is drag and drop on top of the clip. If you put it below the clip, it won't show up. Now you can do the same thing with JPEGs, but it will not have the transparent background. So there is my logo in the middle of the frame. And how you move it around is you go over here, to the crop tool. There are three different selections that you can have down in this drop down menu. The first one is transform, and that'll be the first one I'll explain. Click on transform, and you have all these different anchor points. The center one, you're able to move your image around, and all these other ones on the edges, you are able to freely move it. So I wanna make this a little bit bigger and move it to the center. You can see that these lines pop up, so then that way you can see where the center of the frame is. <laughs> Now you're able to see the picture through my logo. Now the next tool that I'm gonna explain is the crop tool. Now there's three different options within the crop tool and that is trim, crop, and Ken Burns. Trim, you are able to bring in the edges so you can crop out half your image if you want. Now crop will crop your image in the same aspect ratio that you imported it in to where trim, you're able to trim from whatever side you want. Now Ken Burns will let you zoom in on an image over time. You can select the start and stop point of your image so if I want it to start over here and end over here, do that and press enter and let's see what that looks like. All right, so you can see it drifting across the frame. Now this last one in this menu is distort and that is just what it sounds like. You are able to distort your pictures. Now when you're done using any of these tools, all you have to do is re-click on this tool and it will deselect your image. Now you could use all of these tools in this menu on video also. Okay, to finish up this video, let's add some text. Now you can go up here to this icon and browse through all of your different options. Just like the transitions, you can buy or download different texts that do a bunch of different things, but Final Cut also comes preloaded with standard texts. So right now we'll stick with the preloaded options within Final Cut. Let's do one of these lower thirds text elements that I've been using throughout the video. Let's go with this really absurd one that I would never used in one of my videos all you do is click and then drag and drop over top of the clip that you want to put the text over now I'll put the playhead over the middle of the text bar so i can see what this will look like select down here the text bar and now when you put your cursor over top of these it will let you select and edit them all you have to do is double click on them now type what you want final cut over here in the description double click dear now, just like anything else that you're going to edit in this program, you're able to go over here into this menu once you have this selected. And there's a bunch of different options for you to edit this text. Also, if you click this tab right here with the T for text, you could have it build in or build out. And there's also different things that you can go through there and experiment with. Now, if this text is too long for you, you can drag the end of it and make it shorter or longer. Let's leave it right there and see what it looks like. 
Awesome. Now I just want to remind everybody when you're editing any part of your video, make sure that the playhead is over top of whatever you want to edit. So if I want to edit this text, I'll make sure that the playhead is over my text. So when I think I'm finished editing, I always go through and watch the video in full within Final Cut, just in case I missed anything, I'm able to make changes before I export. Since this is a demonstration, I'm not going to make you watch it again. But once you have decided everything is the way you want it, go up here to this arrow icon to export your video. Now when I first got Final Cut, this export file option was not available. So all you have to do is go down here to add destination and export file will be over here. And all you have to do is select it. So then that way it is a default destination. So you click export file. So once you click it, it will show you all of your videos information here. It'll tell you the resolution, the frames per second, how long it is. And also right here, it'll show you how large the file size is for your video. So click next. And now you're able to pick the destination of where you're going to save your video. We'll just save it on to the desktop. You can change the name up here, click save. And now up here, it'll show you your progress. Oh, that one saved incredibly quickly. But usually that wheel will, you know, go for a little while if you have a larger video. So it will pop up when it's all done saving and let's preview the video we just edited. Okay, so there you go. With that information that I just told you, you should be able to edit your first, second, third, and maybe even fourth video in Final Cut. So thank you for watching. I hope that that video was helpful to you. I know learning a new workflow can be really challenging, and I tried to break it down and make that as simple as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below, and I hope that you have a good day.